and cuff them. You're not supposed to shoot them in the back like, you know, in the Wild West they used to call them yellow-bellied cows. Cow. You got a belly saps. You got a stripe running down your back. You cow, you were you Yeah, you shoot the man in the back. Yeah. You're supposed to tackle him and cuff him. Right. So one bullet goes out, the guy gets shot in the back, he goes down. Now all the extra bullets, to me that's those that's hatred and personal feelings going uh -huh. into all those extra bullets. That's uh -huh. why I said murder and hate crime combined. Ooh, could be. Because why, all right, he's white, he or she is black. Okay, well, how come because, the, uh, hey, what about the black woman in California that the cops just rough her up on, on, the, on the highway, punching her in the head and, punch, you know, I mean, you, you, you handcuff her, you, you know, you yeah. subdue her, and that's it. That's it. And if you got to call for backup, you call for backup. Yeah, but they don't do that. Because they're bad seeds. Do you think somebody? Bad seeds. You think it, it? It sounds like. Now talk about patterns. It sounds like it's a pattern connected with the Republicans taking the Congress uh -huh. and all this fascist stormtrooper behavior. Well, they do like it. Yeah. They do like it. Yeah. It's for years and years and years when you followed the conservatives politically and etc. It was always that they were they hated Miranda rights. Oh my God! You know, do anything you want to the guy, the perpetrator, etc. Read him his Miranda rights. No way. Well, the Democrats had control of the House and Senate. I didn't see all this fascist uh, hate. Uh, uh, racial mm. hatred stuff and police brutality. I didn't see any of this. Did you see voter IDs? No, what's new no. about that? Well, that's what came about as soon as the uh, Supreme Court gave the uh, uh, the Republicans the right to do that shit. Because they want to discourage yeah. minorities and poor people from voting. Mm. Because people they know... Vote Democrat. Because they know these people vote Democrat. That's correct. Now, when I watched the um, Donald Trump documentary last night on the History Channel, a very long documentary, mm -hmm. but very fascinating. I sat through every minute of it. Mm -hmm. um, the part when, you know, uh, Donald Trump were, said those disparaging uh, things about uh, Latinos, at the end he, he, he says, well, I suppose some of them are good. Yeah. Now. I suppose some of them are good to me was the racist the most racist comment of all because you are you oh I as, I suppose it's like saying well I'm assuming some of them may be good well then you when you say that it's like well then most of them are not good to him to Donald Trump well, I would say that uh, most of the 11 or 12 million, whatever figure you want to take, of the illegal immigrants that are right now in the United States obviously have to be good or they would be, you know, arrested or put in jail or just any other thing, right? Yeah, well, well and some... These are, these are ones that broke the law, right? Well, because so, they came in illegally. Well, and some of them may be brought over... By their by a relative, uh, you know, some might some might have. Um, I mean, is it possible for a, a tourist visa to allow someone to work, or do they have to have the? No, I'm sorry, they have to apply for the card. It's not an H one B. It's yeah, a, it's a that's specific why illegal working illegal. It's a specific card where they take your biometrics and blah yeah. blah and, and it's like, it looks like a driver's license it has yeah. your photo on it and it's a card that allows you to work in the United States this is before you get a green card yeah. this is you don't even have your green card yet yeah. but there is a card which lets you work hey my hunch is the government allows them to do it because if you don't have a green card that means companies can screw you yeah. with, with a low wage, yeah. lower wage. Yeah, I believe that was uh, that, that may have been part of the bill that was they, they tried to get through called E-Verify, which would have given these illegals information like that and everything, and then the, the corporations wouldn't hire them. 
yeah. if you had to verify that your people that you were paying uh, were uh, illegal, then, you know, the companies wouldn't have hired them. Yeah, like now recently, was it Boeing decided to cut the pensions, uh, uh, to end the pensions of, of Oh, and tens of thousands of employees. I forgot what it was. 50,000, 60,000. It was a hell of a lot of employees. Mm -hmm. Cut their pensions and said that um, in order for us to keep our cost down, we have to do this. That's just a feeble excuse. What about the CEO <coughs> of Boeing uh, cutting his salary? How about that? No, 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 no. All the money must go upward. It must go upward. So much for they are the job creators. So much for trickle down economics, right? Okay, job creators. You know that's a lie, don't you? Of course I okay. do, but they don't. Anyway, let us sink our teeth ah. into these readings before we get too long winded here. Okay, what do I got here? Let's see. Well, you got to start off with... If Republican presidential frontrunner Donald Trump, speaking of Mr. Trumple, shows up at the next CNN debate, it will be for free. Wow, I thought he was charging CNN. How magnanimous of him. CNN President Jeff Zucker said Thursday that his network does not pay candidates for showing up at debates. I, I agree with him. The first time I ever agreed with a CEO. And that rule applies to Trump. And if he doesn't like it, don't let the door hit him on the ass on the way out. Who has been a ratings magnet for the Republican primary debates in the 2016 race for the White House. Trump said on Monday at a campaign stop in Georgia that his presence at the debates has turned them into revenue windfalls for the cable news networks. Well, the experts said last night in the um, in the uh, documentary that Donald Trump uses his outrageous comments and statements to to gain publicity for himself, and he ends up being bigger than ever. Yeah, he he plays on that. Yeah. And that he wanted $5 million for CNN's next debate. Five, scheduled for December the 15th. $5 million per debate. In Las Vegas. Sounds a little low for Donald Trump, is not it? <laughs> oh, the next one is going to be in Las Vegas? The 15th is... Is that a Tuesday? Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. I hope in the next... Uh, Democratic debate. I hope Bernie Sanders stops being such a perfect gentleman to Hillary Clinton. You know, get real. She's not uh, sugar and spice and everything nice. Trump, oh excuse me, he said he would donate the payment to charity. No he didn't, he said he'd devo de de devote it to the vets. Let's say charity. He says he When would. are the vets charity? That's your duty. Vet, it's your duty to care for your vets coming home. For crying out loud. What no, no, that? no, no. They put their, they got their legs blown off and their arms and, and uh, some of them, their their head, piece of their head, their face, and come back dead. No, 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 no. They did that for their country. And it's your duty to take care of the vets. That's correct. Trump made a similar demand before the last GOP debate that aired on CNN on November the 14th. CNN ignored it, and the candidate showed up anyway. <laughs> Watched by 22.9 million people, the debate gave the cable news network the largest audience in its 35-year history. I watch it for the comedy. That's the only reason why I watch it. I, I never watch CNN. No, 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 no. I, well, I know Bill Morrow says, oh, they're very fair and unbiased. Yeah, sure. No, no, none of them are. Yeah. But I watched the Republican debate for the comedy. I actually watched Fox News to keep up with the enemy. 
Oh, you mean like because keep, keep your enemy closer? That's correct. Keep you your will, friends close, but keep your enemy closer. Because you will learn more from your enemy than you will from your friends, actually. Because your friends aren't going to tell you the truth all the time. You know what I mean? Your and your enemy won't miss will, will not miss a th a trick or anything. They'll tell you everything. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> They'll tell you everything. It's their it's their job to wear you down and screw you up. Yeah. Because they they are your adversary. That's correct. Oh, I forgot. Uh -oh. Where is this guy? I want to honor all unions in the United States, especially those that support Bernie Sanders, and I want to honor the United States uh, a Postal Union and the United States Post Office, there is a, uh, a metallic uh, die-cast uh, replica of a uh, postal truck. Go, go Postal Union, go all unions, and go I, Post Office U.S. Um, P.S. I salute you with uh, my lucky Blackthorn shillelagh. All right. I just want to pay homage to the Postal Union and all unions and may you not support the Gorgon Medusa headed Ooh. witch Hillary Clinton. Okay, go ahead. After years of stymied efforts to address the nation's aging and congested highways and bridges, a funny Congress found the sweet spot for passage on Thursday a five-year, $305 billion bill laden with enough industry favors, parochial projects, safety improvements, and union demands to gain overwhelming support. Overwhelming support. The bill was approved 359 to 65 in the House and 83 to 16 in the Senate. The bill now goes to the White House for President Obama's signature. The bill boosts highway and transit spending and assures states that federal help will be available for major projects. It doesn't include as much money, or last quite as long as many would have liked, and it doesn't resolve how to pay for transportation programs in the long term. Despite that, the 1,300-page bill was hailed as a major accomplishment that will halt the cycle of last-minute short-term fixes that have kept the trust fund teetering on the edge of insolvency for much of the past eight years. Uh, by the way, Obama wanted, you know, this money to be going to infrastructure since day one. Republicans leaders can point to the bill's passage as evidence of their ability to govern. Govern my ass. And President Obama can claim progress on addressing the nation's troubled infrastructure. A major goal since the early days of his administration. The Republican Congress shot that down too. That's correct. They wanted they Because want it would provide jobs. Obama would be a job creator. So it's they're still obsessed with sabotaging Obama's administration and record. If they have their way, I can guarantee you, after Obama leaves office... They'll continue. In the history books, there will be an asterisk next to his name. He never was. <laughs> okay? Well, isn't there a saying called, the proof is in the pudding? Uh, if that were true, everyone would not believe conspiracies and and lies and subterfuge and well conspiracies you know conspiracies that are uh, that are against the elitists and the people on top I, I call those good conspiracies 
Well, that can't be a conspiracy then. If a conspiracy is true, well, if you prove it's it, a, yeah. it's not a, a conspiracy. Actually, means conspiracy means a hunch, right? No, people joining together, conspiring, to conspiring. Yeah. That's all that is. But no, every every cult, religion, is a conspiracy. Yeah. Okay. Like when Hillary Clinton many years ago said. The great right wing conspiracy. Yeah. You you could you could actually call the Republican Congress a great right wing they conspiracy. Are. Yes, they are. Or the Senate. And the things that the Supreme Court has done in the interim, like Citizens United, right and wing McCutcheon, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. People like Anthony Scalia and his and his buddies up there, they're part of a right wing conspiracy. Yes, they are. Often crazy and 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 uh, uh, um. Uh, zealot, you know, religious nutty, but yeah, they're part of it. So, well, th he's a Catholic, you know. Catholics can be he's religious Catholic, nuts, but he he's don't like what Francis, that Pope Francis is saying, because Pope Francis about the poor and etc. He don't like that. Well, they they sure hate the poor, don't they? <laughs> yes, they do. They disdain it. The Bible because says Pope Francis has a good heart and he cares. And uh, that's not good for uh, the Catholic Antonin Scalia. No, not good for capitalism. Compassion, empathy, helping the poor. That happens to be in the Bible many times. And uh, they, that, that just doesn't uh, scratch them where they itch. No, 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 no. One hallmark of the bill is the creation of new programs to focus federal aid on eliminating bottlenecks and increasing the capacity of highways designated as major freight corridors. Oh yeah, another thing that just came to mind. What about the the um, high-speed uh, rail rail system that the world is enjoying that the United States doesn't have? Light rails, monorails, uh, bullet trains, and uh, I mean, well, we'll probably have to import all that shit from China. Oh, I really feel comfortable going 225 or 250 miles an hour in a in a, a Chinese yeah. monorail. I feel really confident in, in that trip. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they China does have a bullet train. Yes, it does. And I don't know what's going on with it, but. Uh, Everyone except third world countries seem to have bullet trains. And the United States has those old dinosaur Amtraks. Chugga 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 I just saw a country the other day, I'm not sure. I'm 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 gonna say Brazil, but I'm not sure. It just it had such a bad traffic problem that it put in a train and it helped. Hey man, some metro. Let me tell you something. Those those trolleys of the old days that ran on um, electricity, I believe. Yeah. Those trolleys. Overhead wires. Those trolleys um, were a great idea that they should have just kept on modifying because it alleviates traffic because you have much less uh, cars on the road, it alleviates pollution. And, and and it helps out with people that really can't afford the uh, the auto insurance to to have a car. There are many people that you know, and they're I I think they're better than buses. I think they're well. There's no pollution with them. They're they're electric. Aren't they? Um, aren't they less affected by traffic? Also, well, they have their own tracks compared to buses. Yeah, they have their own tracks, so I guess so. Yeah, so what the hell? I mean, well, I re I, I know that when I uh, lived back in Pennsylvania, uh, Wilkesbury had them for many, many, many years. Yeah, uh, of course, the only ones that use it, but they do it for tourists, is San Francisco. Uh, the uh, the old the baseball team called the Brooklyn Dodgers it was actually the book the Brooklyn trolley dodge yeah the Brooklyn they, they the, dodged the trolley the Brooklyn trolley Dodgers and they were there were trolleys in Brooklyn and I'm sure there were trolleys uh, in many parts of the United States 
Um, yeah, well, John D. Rockefeller didn't like that, okay? He wanted to sell his oil, baby. He wanted that uh, car engine. All right? Sucking up that oil. Well, isn't he one of the, one of the uh, fat cats that Thomas Edison sold out to? It was Rockefeller. They're all fat cats and sellouts. J They're J capitalists. J.P. Morgan, okay. Rockefeller, did not go with uh, Nikola Tesla. They went with Thomas Edison. Because they, because they wanted to charge people for electricity and everything else. Well, we just saw that recently in the 90s with the uh, with cable. They took away our free TV and gave us cable, which we had to pay for. I remember when the first company, the first bottle, uh, bottled spring water hit the market. My grandfather was mad. He says, there's no <laughs> fucking way I'm paying for water. There's no fucking way I'm paying for TV. That was cable. <laughs> Yeah. He had a point. They are. He says, what's next? Uh, having a meter on the amount of oxygen we inhale? Yes, now? yes, it's coming. <laughs> Look at China. <laughs> Look at the pollution in China. Oh, you know, you know, if the pollution doesn't change in Beijing, uh, and, and, and let's say China became uh, like, um, like Colombia. Let's say China became pure capitalist, right? Pure. They could say, oh, you want to be able to breathe and live, you have to pay this amount of money for a yeah. gas mask. Every time you go outside, you got to buy one of our gas masks. That's something that's very capitalist. Yeah, that's why it'll probably be here first. <laughs> you know? But, uh... We um, do, well, there are oxygen bars around the world, you know, where you can go in and breathe pure oxygen. Air. You know, and the very, very few times I was in a hospital, let me tell you something. That oxygen tube they stick in your nose. Yeah. Well, you're just making that sound because it's something they put in your nose. I had it put up my dick. No, no. This with is a stupid catheter. No, 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 no. There's no comparison. This is actually <laughs> pleasant. Pleasant. And anyway, the oxygen, the pure oxygen, is very invigorating to yeah, the, to, well, the, to yeah. the body and mind. <laughs> okay. Fewer cases of diabetes are being diagnosed in the United States in adults, according to star startling new federal statistics released on Tuesday. Diabetes had been climbing for decades, driven by surging obesity rates. In 2009, the number of new cases reached 1.7 million. By last year, it had dropped to 1.4 million. After so many years of seeing increases, it is surprising, said a diabetes expert who has been tracking the numbers at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. In recent years, the number of new cases seemed to be leveling off or even going down. But researchers wanted to see a few more years of data before declaring an improvement. The figures from the last two years confirm a significant drop. The biggest declines in new diabetes cases rates were in men, white people, young and middle-aged adults, and in people with more than a high school education. But there have not been substantial declines in other groups like the elderly and minorities. The data comes from a large national survey conducted by the government every year. This is a little bit of a dip, and that's encouraging, said Dr. Robert Gabe. But we probably don't want to say we've won the battle and everyone can go home. There are still 1.4 million new adult cases every year. Overall, there are about 22 million Americans with diabetes. Why the number of new cases is falling is not clear. 
Officials would like to think it's the result of a push to get people to exercise more and cut back on how many sugary foods and drinks they consume. Let me tell you, I was in, um, I was in a, um, a store yesterday and um, actually I was in Walgreens and uh -huh. I, I see this I see this young child um, extremely uh, I would say man, a, a little a little bit older than a toddler but not far from it uh -huh. very obese Ooh. can barely walk he, he was waddling from side to side like a penguin Aye. he had a pacifier in his mouth and he was like he was like knocking into things almost like he had trouble walking and then I hear a woman scolding him and it was the mother and the mother was very obese so I consider that child abuse when you feed when you make your children a carbon copy of you mm -hmm. and you're uh, obese and you feed you're feeding your child the same poison that you're feeding yourself to become ob obese in my opinion that's child abuse and um, you know when when these obese people say well we're we're just an alternative lifestyle and uh, blah blah you know and, uh, no no you you're living a self-destructive lifestyle mm -hmm. you're not an alternative lifestyle and what you're doing to your children should be considered obese I mean, uh -huh. should be considered uh, 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 unlawful as child abuse. Feeding a kid whatever you're feeding him to make the child grossly overweight. Well, you oh. see, that's another problem with nutritional information. It's like it's like trying to give uh, the cultists, the religious cultists, uh, more accurate information. It doesn't work. They have their own stupid ideas, you know? Well, they might say, uh, oh, I went to the doctor and had a blood test and uh, my blood pressure is uh, normal and uh, and my blood work came back okay and uh, meanwhile the person is like 400 pounds and and, uh, and then you look at their family, their family uh, lineage, family tree and you, you notice that every one of them is obese. So they grew up with obesity. As Gary Knoll has said many times, <laughs> nobody who is overweight can be healthy. I agree with him. Okay. Even though we bucked heads a few times, I agree with him very much so. You know, I mean, uh, he, he is a very determined vegan. Uh, uh, um, uh, you know, I mean, there are extremes in everything.